Hey guys, this is Anton over at thehyperadvisor.com. I wanted to show off the, the IO accelerator from Fusion IO um, using IO turbine here in this uh, vSphere environment. Currently I have a single host, um, one system here. This is a HP uh, uh, BL460G7 blade and it has the 320 gig IO accelerator from Fusion IO. Now this is branded you know for HP and it's a meds card that goes into the blade um, but this is set up so that we can use this for um, getting better performance um, for, for storage I.O. in the virtual environment. So I have a VM here that's configured and let me go into the, the management interface here and the management interface consists of a virtual appliance that you import and you're able to uh, configure the the uh, virtual machines with the this you know deploy the software that needs to go in the virtual machine and configure the configure them for the um, how they're going to use the the actual um, uh, IR accelerator. So this first virtual machine here I've already configured. If we right click on here, um, we can see where the VM package management. Um, if this did not have the software on it already, you would go in here, you would select the virtual machine, you would select the version of software package you want it to install, and then you go ahead and install. I just will install the software it needs on the actual virtual machine, and you'd have to reboot the virtual machine at that given point. But once the virtual machine comes back up and it shows the status that it's running, um, this virtual machine is ready to be configured so that we can use it here for uh, accelerating the I.O. So if we go into the configuration tab, and I've already configured this virtual machine, but I'm just going to quickly walk through the steps that I've, I've done. So right here, on the under the configuration tab what we'd have to do if you wanted to configure this virtual machine is assign a share for it so I selected normal and by default that came up to 4,000 shares here that this virtual machine has but you can customize this or choose one of the other settings here and once that's done you would click apply um, once this is applied and the, this process is finished, you see a process running here at the bottom, and that process is finished, um, what you'd have to do is configure the, the volume caching. So I've already done this, but in, in your particular environment, if you have not configured this on a virtual machine, you click edit and uh, you select the volume that needs to that you want to uh, configure for caching. They also have some other options here where you can uh, do disk caching and file caching as well. So I'm going to do the volume caching. It's already set up. We can see here the volume caching is not started. You can start it from here, but um, in this particular case, I'm going to start it from the command line using the tools that were installed when we installed the software. So if I switch over to the virtual machine, you can see I've been running um, Iometer uh, just to get some baseline metrics with the caching off. And we can see this has been running for a while. And if I look, look at the numbers using the, the results since it, I started the test, you can get a good average here of what the performance is going to look like. So I can go ahead and take a, a screenshot here of this actual number here. This has been running for a while, so it's a good 
a good metric to to show what the performance is going to look like and I'll bring that up later but let me go into the we'll stop this and I'll go into the settings here so um, name this one default benchmark for NFS the virtual machine is on an NFS data store so uh, just to reference that uh, let me go edit so the settings I've done here, I've used the 4K uh, and 4K, and then I've set everything basically for read and 100% random. So you see the settings here. I'm going to keep these settings for both tests when I run the caching and without the caching, um, but this is how I'm going to actually uh, configure this this particular specification so that it'll it'll uh, read do a lot of reads on the actual drive. The IO turbine, from my understanding, the and testing the the reads is where you'll, you're actually going to get a benefit from using um, IO turbine and VMware here. Um, if there's any writes, I think that it you won't see any optimization on the writes um, directly um, from the the caching module, but um, indirectly because you're you're lowering the utilization on the system because of the reads, um, you'll see that writes uh, will perform better. So let's get into some of the other settings that I have configured here. We go into the disk targets. see that for both of them the, the both of the workers are the same now I have this VM configured for 2 gigs of RAM and um, also two CPUs so I have two workers here so that we can use both CPUs and for the C drive um, I basically put in enough sectors to uh, Get a good size. I think right now the sectors will create a one gig file that we can use for testing. Uh, here's the actual file that just created. And yes, one gig. Oh, back. And for the number of outstanding IOs, um, I put a a target here of 32 just to make sure we are getting some work um, going into this thing um, so let's go ahead and start the caching um, if we look here the caching is not started as we saw in the actual GUI and if I come in here and I start Start caching. Go ahead and check the status just to make sure it's started. And we can see that the caching has started. I'm going to run another command here. This will give us some statistics on the actual drive here so that we can see when there's any writes or reads going on. So let me go back to the iometer and I'm going to go ahead and start this using the same settings that I did previously. And don't really need to save the results. Uh, we'll go ahead and watch, watch it live as it happens. So I'm going to change this to the last update so we can see the the, how this will increment and increase over time here and then we'll we can switch it back but we can see right now the, the IOs are uh, IOPS are going pretty high here uh, near what they were before and if we look into the the uh, statistics here of the of the caching module 
we can see that the hit ratio is, is actually 25% uh, and it's going up. So the miss is here, 72. Um, so the performance on the on the card, this is why we're we're seeing the performance is not um, like a big difference at this point in time. And let me see if I can get the windows to switch over. Yeah, we're at 40%, so we should be getting a fairly good amount of IOPS here. Um, once, once it takes a while for the cache to warm up, but once the uh, the cache is warmed up and we have every and it's reading uh, pretty much uh, everything from the cache, we'll notice that the the IOPS will will jump significantly. So we can already see that it's higher than, than what we were getting on the, the previous. And I can bring that up. Okay, so here's a screenshot of what we were getting before. We can see it was 2400 here, a little over 2400. Uh, the I/O response time was 26, um, and that was since the startup. And if we go ahead and look at what we're getting now, put these kind of side by side, uh, we can see the the IOPS have gone considerably higher than what we were getting before. Um, and if we go ahead and make the change to where we're doing from the start here, if we look at the utilization on the card here, we can see that the hit ratio now is uh, over 99%. So it's going to the cache pretty much with everything. Um, so if we go to the, if we look at the numbers from the start of the test, uh, we can see that. The numbers still are higher, um, 10, 10 times higher, uh, it looked like roughly 10 times higher than what we were getting before when we were not using caching. So um, the caching, the IO module is, is obviously showing that, that it's doing something here and we're getting a, a benefit out of it. So. That's basically it. I know this is just um, one simple test and there are a number of tests that can be done. But this is just a quick one just to show that the, the, the IO module um, does make a considerable difference um, when doing a benchmark of this, this type. And it pretty much is for read. Just bear that in mind when you're looking at using the product. Um, and that's it. So hope hope you like the the video. Don't forget to check out my blog over at thehyperadvisor.com, and you can also tweet me over at the hyperadvisor. That's it.